So, is Bishop underrated? Alright, what is going on my dudes? We are back here today with another Are They Underrated video, and this one we are going to be taking a look at Bishop. Now, Bishop is a very interesting champion. I feel like when he came out, he had a lot of stuff going on, but it was right at the height of the parry and dex bug issues that are still in the game, still plaguing the game, but at this point, I feel like so many people have adjusted to them, but... Bishop's a champion who many of his abilities kind of rely on him like being able to parry or at least just like, you know, uh, block the opponent, right? Even if they're stun immune um, to build up his prowess and everything. So, you know, that all started the month that Bishop was buffed, I believe. So right away, this guy was like done a disservice by like, you know, the game issues at the time. Uh, the game issues that are still happening, right? But I feel like this guy definitely has a lot of things going on and a lot of stuff that's still yet to be explored with this guy. So right away, one thing that's so cool is that his persistent power meter is very unique. You know, he, he pretty, pretty much starts the next fight where he ended the last one on his power bar. And now with his buff, you know, a special one and two, they cost no power when activated. And instead, when the specials end, that's when he loses the power. So if you end the fight with a special two, you can still start the next fight with a special two. His energy resistance is actually off the chain, plus 4,000 energy resistance. His prowess, all of Bishop's personal prowess effects increase special attack damage by 10% each that's quite a bit um every one second on receiving any energy damage gain three passive prowess absorbing the kinetic energy of blocking or being struck generates one stack of prowess well time blocks gain an additional plus six all these abilities grant plus one prowess versus skill and minus one versus tech so against skill champs this guy is going to absolutely melt them holding a block you can get rid of bleed debuffs uh each prowess converted has a 100 percent chance to purify a bleed when you hold block for 0.5 seconds bishop converts one personal prowess into a regen buff every point 33 seconds granting 200 health over five seconds that's not too bad at all right look at this each time the opponent purifies a debuff they instantly receive 2066 energy damage and skill champs also receive a passive stun lasting 1.5 seconds if the debuff purified was a stun that's very like you know storm pyramid x type thing um but very you know powerful mechanic right there uh power overload while he has more than 30 prowess or if he's bleeding shocked or incinerated he overloads and begins consuming his personal prowess effects one at a time getting faster the longer he's been overloading now if he's suffering from a bleed shock or incinerate debuff or passive each time he consumes a prowess this way he also deals 500 energy damage to his opponent scaling with base attack now for his special attacks each one of those they're going to use up the prowess that he has all right if he's overloading at the time you go unblockable for the duration of the special attack now the special one is so annoying on defense nowadays because it starts you know <laughs> that steady release passive that puts all the incinerates on you every 0.75 seconds while near the opponent you inflict an incinerate deal debuff dealing 840 energy damage over three seconds and each prowess consumed by this attack is going to increase the duration by 2.5 percent the special two is his big damage dealer the last hit has a 100 percent chance to inflict an incinerate debuff lasting 10 seconds and dealing 70 percent of the total damage dealt by the attack that's a very 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 big damage dealer right there and the special three 100 percent chance to inflict a non-stacking energy vulnerability reducing energy resistance by 1274 for 20 seconds and against enemies of full health the enemy the energy vulnerability becomes indefinite now there are synergies that you can use that pretty much lets you start the fight with three bars of power really really crazy so check this out start the fight with plus two prowess and one bar of power with cyclops dr strange electro storm and then also he has a synergy here with Psylocke. Opponents are inflicted with a Petrify for 100% potency for one second after they fill a bar of power. This Petrify is paused during Bishop and Psylocke's special attacks. That's decent, right? Don't really need it. But what you can do here is build a team around Bishop to essentially start with three bars of power, go right in, and just do a special three. It's kind of really insane, man. You can also just start with two bars of power, parry a bunch of times, and then just launch an enormous special too. He also has some other decent synergies as well with these champions right here. All these champions at least kind of okay. Nova and Mangog on the more underwhelming side. But over here, he has two with Storm X right here. Every 15 seconds, generate a power gain buff, granting 20% of a bar of power over five seconds. While this power gain is active, each prowess increases special attack damage by an additional 3%. So that's 13% 
on top of just, you know, instead of 10%. So I like that synergy quite a bit. Also, Mutant Agenda, Mutants Landed Strikes during special attacks gain plus 12% attack rating. That's a really solid synergy for Bishop, man. Just really good. Over here with Howard, great synergy for Howard allows him to remove prowess and also plus 12% prowess duration and potency. That's even more prowess potency. And over here with Nova, uh, receiving energy damage generates one additional stack of prowess. And then with Mangog over here, 25% regenerate and plus 30% prowess potency, dude. So this right here is like the Bishop damage team, dude. So if you're looking for like damage, this is what you want to do. Now, the other synergies are really great for like, you know, uh, getting to that special two really, really quickly and just like parrying a bunch without giving them any power and killing them. But if you just kind of play this guy like normal here, right, right away got rid of the bleed. <sighs> you know, like don't worry about like limiting your power. Watch, push him up to a special two. I wish he would throw it. Watch this. Go for this. And that's enormous. That's just absolutely huge. And look how easy that was. It's ticking for like 9,000 per second more. And it's like effortless. It's like actually effortless, man. In fact, I really want to like bait out another special two here. Ooh, ooh, power draining. Okay, calm down. Come on. Dude, the AI in, Winter, in, in Realm of Legends is literally so bad. All right, you know what, man? Just just die because it's, this is gonna this is gonna kill him. So I don't know why I was waiting so long. But as you can see, man, like two special twos against Winter Soldier. Watch how the prowess goes up on like that kind of thing against skill champions. And that power gain from Storm is so nice, man. And now, see, we finished this fight here right with two bars of power what is so crazy and that was such a sloppy fight right because i was trying to bait out the special two in a bunch of combos while doing so um but he just completely wrecked it like wrecked it so now i have the persistent charge right and a little two next to it so i'm starting with two bars of power so what i could do here is get rid of that bleed like why, why isn't the bleed not going away okay that took a little bit so now at this point it's gonna be hard to like consistently parry in realm of legends but we can try Twenty nine, decent, right? And now, you can play like normal. So that would kind of be like if I had the synergies. Nice. <laughs> if I very nice. If I had the synergies that was letting me start, right, with two bars of power, this is how that fight would look. Because you go in here starting with two bars of power. And now one thing that is very important for bishop is that you do i don't want to say you don't want to, you don't rely necessarily on crit rng but that's where a lot of your damage comes from because the special two is going to be doing so much damage based on the damage that your special two does so if you crit on every hit of your special two well then essentially you're going to have some bigger incineration and again we can finish the fight here on this special two, unblockable special two, and we're gonna go into the next fight with the special two ready to go. So that's really solid, man. And of course, this is like big damage synergy team, but what we can do here is we could do the same fight. We could do Winter Soldier again, and we won't use this team because we wanna see how he does, you know, without a full team, of course. But I just wanted to show you right away, this is like the max damage synergy team that if you know and this is not you know you can make him a, a horseman and you can have professor x as well and that's probably going to be even better but i mean how often does that actually happen where you, you can make him a horseman and also ramp up professor x you know i'm sure plus 100 percent special attack damage and uh 50 prowess plus another 30 percent from like white magneto would like be good for him right i'm sure that'd be amazing but like I said, how often is that practical? 
not not so much right so let's go and let's try winter soldier with just bishop see how he does so we're pretty much really gonna go in for like the same rotation here it's gonna be like parrying a bunch and getting up to special two and not worrying about you know the power gain that storm gave us so we kind of like tried to time it you know with that power gain right because it does like more damage then now winter soldier by the way is just like such a good matchup for bishop because he's got like the special one so many opportunities to parry 43 prowess here let's see and it looks pretty similar to when we had a full damage team definitely slightly less no doubt about it right definitely less because we had like um the howard synergy was giving us additional potency on the prowess um the mangog i think was doing that as well so what we can do here is we can try and bait out two special ones in a row okay so 46 prowess 49 <laughs> 42 let's see no crits unfortunately no crits so regen a little bit too the regen is like it's not huge regen but it's also like not the worst regen in the game either yeah so with the full synergy team it kind of looks like we were getting them down in about two special twos right here this is going to be about three. Oh, and that was a nice big one yeah it really but here's the thing so it really does heavily depend on rng it really does on crit rng for the special too now keep in mind this is an unduped bishop now we're going to take a look at his sig ability so we're over on ant may we have our six star rank two bishop and he has a bunch of parts to his uh sig ability here so bitch foresight bishop prepares a unique bonus based on how many bars of power are full at the start of the fight so right away you don't get all these bonuses okay you get this based on how many persistent charges you have so in my opinion it's not the absolute best and most essential sig ability here it's nice to have especially a certain bit here but we'll talk about it okay so with zero bars if you have zero percent charges here special attacks become unblockable with a stack of 29 or to 10 or more prowesses so this is really nice for like you know you need 30 prowess for unblockable specials when you're unduped right and without this ability here at sig 200 just 10 more prowess that's nice you know me i love unblockable specials but that's not like a, a game changing ability for bishop in my opinion at one bar, while blocking, gain stun immunity and enemies lose 10 to 80% ability accuracy. That's actually very good, man. Now, just the stun immunity is great. Makes him an option for like encroaching stun, okay? Um, but minus 80% ability accuracy at SIG 200 is nice. That's nice, man. Just while blocking. Um, with two bars. Special attacks leave the target incinerated for 9 to 70% of the special damage dealt over 10 seconds. So this kind of like doubles that damage over time at SIG 200, which is really, really nice. And with three bars of power, start the fight with steady release active um, for 3.02 to 15 seconds. So that's also really good because what you can do is if we go back down to the special three ability over here, um... 100% chance to inflict a non-stacking energy vulnerability, reducing energy resistance by 1274 for 20 seconds or indefinite, right? If they're at full health. So what you want to do here, essentially, if you start with three bars of power, you go into the fight and you're mashing, you're mashing that special three, right? So right away, you, they're at full health, all right? Before they can get the incinerate on them, you go for the special three, uh, steady release is happening, and then they're going to have an energy vulnerability, and then the steady release right that's oh no it's on the special one steady release that's when all this energy damage with the incinerate is going to happen and then you're going to have a lot more energy damage and then it's going to, yeah so it's good stuff man it's but here's the thing none of that is necessary and it's all situational so you have to like go into the fight with the amount of persistent charges so it kind of alters the way you do the fight prior or requires some synergies to start out that way so yeah i definitely don't think this guy needs his sig at all man because all this stuff is like it's going to alter your play style from the fight prior and it's also going to just 
depend on if you can get where you need it to get. And if you don't, then you're kind of, you know, crap out of luck, man. If you're going up to Encroaching Stun and your special one doesn't kill the opponent, and you end up going in with zero bars, well, congrats, you got unblockable special attacks at 10 prowess against Encroaching Stun, and you're screwed, and you'll probably die. So, yeah, man, I wouldn't rely on this stuff. So that's the thing. Unduped Bishop, I think you're good to go. This isn't an is he worth ranking unduped video, but yeah, I think he is. So let's do one more test fight here, testing these synergies that allow you to start with a certain amount of special attack, because I think that's really cool and very useful, man. Um, so right away, we'll throw on like Storm and Electro, because I don't want to start with two bar, three bars of power, because I want that special too, you know? So one interesting thing about it is that if I were to end the fight anywhere above zero bars of power, what would happen is the next fight, oh, come on, the next fight, one more. I'd basically start with three bars of power. No crits, come on. But as you can see right away, just lots of damage right away, man. So, Obviously, we got to test him out against like energy adoption and it used to be like super insane against energy adoption because he would also gain power very quickly, right? But then energy adoption, lightning and ice. So let's see like how he does with like the prowess and everything now because it's going to be shooting him up consistently basically. Get rid of that. Yeah, his prowess is kind of like going all over the place. We're kind of like just in overload nonstop. And the regen is happening here. So are we just in overload consistently because... How do we stop being in overload? Do we have to wait for these to go away? Okay, they're gone. <laughs> I'm a little confused here. It's like going up and also going down at the same time. Like, he's doing good, because, like, there's so much regen happening, which is very interesting. Like, the regen is, like, really topping us up here, and the energy resistance that we have, it's kind of making this, like, a joke. Like, it's making it, like, almost non-existent. That wasn't that big of a special two, obviously, because of the prowess, right? So this is a very, very interesting interaction here, man. He, he almost turns the note off. Like, he doesn't, like, have his, like, crazy prowess potential like I expected him to have. But we ended at 98% health, and we kind of, like, ignored the entire note. So that's a little interesting. Here, it's right here. So, um, while he has a gotcha, more than 30 prowess, or if he's bleeding, shocked, or incinerated, which he was shocked here, he overloads and begins consuming his personal prowess effects one at a time, getting faster the longer he's been overloaded. If Bishop was suffering from a shock, because that was happening, each time he consumes a prowess this way, he also deals energy damage to the opponent. So, like, he was, he did really well there. I just kind of wish he, like, shot up to, like, 50 prowess instead of, like, consuming it all. But the energy resistance was so high that it pretty much, we were healing the entire time while doing consistent damage for, you know, con removing the prowess and then turning it into regen. Like, there, like he did, he, he does well here. I just feel like I used to like what he did better, where he would jump up in prowess and he would, um, at the same time, gain a bunch of power and just destroy them, you know? That was always more fun. But here we can kind of like try and beat them to it before we start losing it, right? Let's see. But just look at how that regen just stays up, man. Yeah, that energy resistance is like enormous. Maybe going for special twos is the move, special ones to get that incinerate on them is kind of the move here. Just gets so much damage over time. I'm like, I'm kind of mixed about this. I'm really mixed 
because it's like, you know, on one hand, obviously there's like, you know, Ghost and Kingpin, who's gonna do this just so much better in general. But also like, I kind of want to go for the energy vulnerability here and see what that does. Because I think that will increase the energy damage that's happening when we purify, you know, or we remove the prowess and everything. So let's see. That'll maybe do better for us. It's ticking for like 670. If we can get to a special one, that'd be nice. Some more incinerates on him. Yeah, like I, I, like I mean, I'm really, I'm really conflicted about how I feel about this because it's kind of taking a little bit of time, but at the same time, he's extremely sustainable doing it. Like our health bar is constantly here, up at a hundred percent. We finished both fights at a hundred percent. And he did it very efficiently. So I'm very conflicted with how to feel there. I'm very conflicted. All right, we're gonna try him out against Energy Adoption Cold Snap here, or Ice, whatever it's called. There's this track and Bubble bubble Shield here. So we're actually gonna be throwing on Mr. Fantastic Prefights just because there's this track. Uh, so yeah, I guess, you know, one of these though, right? The debuff siphoner is going to increase the damage from, um, you know, what do you call it? The incinerate. But yeah, so this energy option, ice and disc track and bubble shield. Got to watch out for that as well. Punisher should be a decent matchup for us. So let's go ahead and see what happens here with his prowess. That's, this is what I'm, this is, okay, this is what I wanted to see. I have a bleed on me, so I have to get rid of that. All right, it looks like we're going up. We are going all the way up here. I got to knock him down because of Mr. Fantastic. We are consistently staying up. Ooh, we are well above 50 here. This is what I wanted to see. This is what I wanted. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That is what I was looking for, dude. See, ah, uh, I wish this is how he kind of just worked on all of them on all of the energy adoptions and and that the lightning shock whatever it's called man shock and incinerate didn't make him just like go into the bad thing that you don't want dude he did so well here we'll just heal oh dude he did so well that makes me sad because he can say he did well on the other ones, but like that was so good. So there's energy adoption, fire, ice, and shock, whatever they're actually called. For the fire and shock, he's going to be going into his overload right away because he can't do anything when there is like a shock, bleed, or incinerate on him. He does stuff, but he doesn't get massive prowess like here against the cold snap. So, unfortunately, it makes me a little sad, you know, because, like, he's sustainable on them. No doubt about that. But, yeah, interesting, though. Interesting. He still, he did well on both of these, but this one was just so much better. So good here. So as you can see from the past couple of fights, he has a very high energy resistance and that goes a long way for a lot of things. Now, Domino's critical failure damage is very obnoxious and at the same time though, it's energy damage, right? Opponents take up to whatever energy damage over blah, 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 blah. Now our energy resistance is absolutely freaking massive, plus 4,000. That is really high energy resistance, incredibly high. So. First things first, get rid of that. See, critical failure is going, right? Now there's also a long distance relationship on here, but as you can see right there from that critical failure, well, we didn't drop below 100% health. Now we had a little bit of willpower healing, but against, you know, most champions that like you were to use here, you're gonna be taking at least some critical failure damage. And as you can see right here, we're just, we're not. So I wouldn't really tout him as like the number one domino counter. Maybe depending on the node, he could be decent. 
But as you can see, he gets around that type of like passive energy damage very nicely. And this is just an unawakened rank two bishop. Just remember that. Okay, we got clipped and now we're about to die. But that's fine because I want to show you some more stuff with this energy resistance as well. So we have this Terax here. Now Terax, uh, just, you know, this, this node combo here, Unlimited Power, Mystic Ward, Mystic Curse, Buffet, not going to be the number one option for Bishop, but just take all the Buffet and everything out of it and just keep in mind that the point to show you here is that look at how he interacts against Terax. So the energy resistance is so strong that we're taking energy damage, we're healing from the armor breaks, And we're not taking too much damage back. Now, the Furies are starting to increase here, but pretty much helped us ramp up very nicely against Terax, as you can see. That a lot of champions would be a lot lower in health right now. Now, keep in mind, he has 10 Furies. And like I said, Act 7 is so specific and silly with the amount of nodes that are on every single fight. And buffet, right? So I tried to regen a tiny bit. Wow. The point of this fight here was to show you how his energy resistance interacts with Terax in a positive way. So I think we showed that. Forget that last dex. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's do like one more test here with that energy resistance. So we're going to go up against a magic, just dueling magic here with a five star bishop. All right, because her limbo, that's energy damage too. So let's trigger limbo. Didn't trigger, of course not. Right there it did. Right there it didn't, again. It's where nothing happens when you want it to happen. There we go. So check it out. We're definitely taking some damage, no doubt about it. But this is a 5-star rank 2 bishop, not a 6-star rank 2 against a 5-star rank 5 magic, right? Should be taking a lot more damage than we actually were. If we were ranked up, we'd have more health, we'd have more energy resistance, right? So, I feel like there's just one more thing that we have to test. So let's say we have like a side quest, right? And we want to use Bishop for it, and we have all these synergies that are going to give us a lot of prowess. Like, what happens if we do this and like a side quest, okay? I want to see how much damage we can do. We'll do two parries. Okay? Let's see. Let's see how much damage we take off, and that's all we're going to look at. So, 8% health on Winter Soldier, which isn't much, but keep in mind that... So, 45,000, right? So, if a side quest has like, I don't know, 100,000 health. Now, shouldn't that energy vulnerability be like indefinite? Or did he take some damage when we purified the bleed? I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, right? If you go in with the full synergy squad here, you start with the special three. So that's definitely kind of cool. So this guy definitely has his uses. I feel like the only thing we didn't show off in this video is how he interacts with like Kingpin and Mole Man when they shrug off his stuns. But basically the same thing as like Storm X where you get a 1.5 second passive stun, really useful to have. So overall, man, I say Bishop is definitely a very decent champion. It can do a lot of things, man. So like I said in the beginning of the video, um, I do think that the parry bug kind of lowered his value at his initial launch. But, I don't know, man. I feel like this guy definitely has a lot of potential for sure. Um, can do a bunch of things. Has some absolutely mega damage. The energy resistance is great. Uh, but yeah, man, I think he's cool. He's not my favorite champ in the game, but he's definitely good. And he can definitely do a lot of things. All right, that's going to be it for this one. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop your boy a big old like. Let me know what you think about Buffed Bishop in the comment section below. And hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future Are the Underrated videos coming to you very, very soon. I'll be seeing you around.